Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, in this video, uh, we are going to talk about how do you fine tune an open source large language model. In most of the cases we have seen, it's relatively more easier to fine tune your model or perform knowledge based embeddings or few short learning or whatsoever in a proprietary software like OpenAI. But in most of the cases, we cannot really share our important data with any such softwares, right? That is why we usually need uh, something like open source large language models. These models allows us to keep our data safe, yet retrieve the best results out of it. One such place to find interesting model is Hugging Face. In case you are not aware of Hugging Face, this is basically a platform where you can have a lot of you know, open source models that you can use and build applications out of it. You just have to go through the conditions that are there for licensing and sharing the model. You just have to follow those guidelines and you are uh, totally allowed and open to use these models for any kind of use case. In this video, we are going to talk about how do you fine tune one of such open source large language model. This is more like a template where you can simply switch models and you can use the same template to fine tune any other open source large language model like Llama, Mistral, anything as such. But to make things easier, to give it an easy start, we're going to use Google's Gemma 7 billion model. If you don't know, there are mainly three versions of large language models. The first one would be the base one, then you have instruct and then you have a chat model. Instruct and chat models are basically fine-tuned versions of the base model that we have. Base models are usually used for next token prediction. So if you're writing an email, you will see like, hi, how are, as soon as you type that, you have you as a suggestion, right? That's basically a base model that kind of works on predicting the next word. Then you further fine-tune it and make it instruction-based model. Instruction-based model kind of allows you to you know follow instructions that you give to the model it's still not as good as uh, the chat model does but you know it depends on the use case what kind of a model that you are looking for and uh, we're gonna use instruct model in this one and uh, to make things easier uh, let me show you uh, Gemma 7b instruct model this is the one that I'm, this is the one that we are using and uh, you can actually chat here and uh, you can see how the model generates its responses and based on that you can choose your model and also what kind of a fine tuning are we going to do in this video we are going to create a prompt enhancing model so one such field uh, that came into existence after LLMs became so popular is prompt engineering right uh, you need to be very careful while you're writing prompt make sure your prompt is clear enough so that the model can fully understand that right uh, in order to overcome this issue we can fine-tune a model so that the model itself gives us the best prompt for that possible for that particular query we're gonna do that right and uh, this is the notebook I've already trained my model just now so I cannot really train it now it, it would just take a long, long time so making things simple I will just go through this notebook explaining each concept to you I'll try to make it as simple as possible for you guys and uh, I hope uh, this would be helpful for you I will also give link to this notebook in the description you can just go over there and access this notebook you can tune your values you can change the large language model that you want and then you can see how it performs so let's start the first library is pytorch because i am personally more comfortable working on pytorch so i'm installing pytorch and then you have okay a couple of libraries here in this one you can see we are using bits and bytes before we begin explaining about bits and bytes when it comes to fine tuning there are different methods of fine tuning for an open source large language model the first thing is i mean the broader name for this fine tuning technique is parameter efficient fine tuning it's called PEFT. Under this, we have different categories of fine tuning that make that allows us to fine tune models in a relatively more computational limited environment. See, the model that we are using in this video is a Google Gemma 7 billion model. Is this too difficult to fine tune this model locally or even using Google Colab, right? You cannot really do it because it has 7 billion parameters, so many of weights and biases, and it just makes it a lot more complex to fine tune it. Parameter efficient fine tunings, it basically allows you to retrain only a small subset of the training model. 
of, of, of the data that's there or, or the weights that's there. So it kind of makes your job a lot more easier and uh, not very computational challenging. You can even do it locally. It's not a problem for you. And this, yeah, I mean, if you're using a 7 billion model, uh, then you can also do it in Colab, depending on the kind of data set that you have. Here you can see bits and bytes allows you to perform that quantization. Quantization is basically, in other words, if I want to make it simple, it's just trying to squeeze things in. Okay, just trying to make it more simple, more smaller. That's what quantization means. So bits and bytes is library from Hugging Faces allows you to perform quantization. Then you have PEFT, as I told you just now, it's a parameter efficient fine tuning. LoRa comes under PEFT, so you have to install PEFT. Later we uh, import LoRa from PEFT. Then you have TRL. TRL stands for Transformer Reinforcement Learning. This is another library from Hugging Face uh, that allows you to use other trainer, uh, like trainer models. Like uh, in this video, we are going to use a supervised fine tuning model. Likewise, you have reinforcement learning model and uh, other models that you can use for Hugging Face. See, the best way to learn about this is just go to the Hugging Face documentation and read about it. If I say TRL Hugging Face, you can read about it here. I mean, the, the documentation is pretty clear and you can give it a nice read. You can see you have supervised fine tuning trainer, then you have reward trainer, then you have uh, proximal policy, then you have like PPO trainer. You have a good amount of models here, right? So you can just read about it uh, and then, okay, I think we missed, yeah, parameter and TRL and then we have accelerated. This basically allows you, this is, this kind of helps you in model inferencing. So you can just run it at any uh, environment having any kind of limitations. Then you have data sets because we are using, we are using hugging face data sets and then we are using transformers. Of course, transform makes us, makes our job a lot more easier without having to go through all those underlying lines of code. It's just like a top layer that you work with. And then you are importing the relevant libraries from here. You can see you are importing a supervised fine tuning trainer, and then you from PEFT, you are using LoRa configuration. Then auto tokenizer that this helps us uh, to choose the best tokenization model for the base model that we are using. In this case, Google Gemma 7 we instruct. The same goes for auto model for causal LM. Causal LM is one such language model task. It, like, it depends on the kind of task that you are working on. Sometimes you might, you, you, you might need a mask language model or you need sequence to sequence model when you're working on translations. But here we are using more like an input output uh, thing. It's like more like a chat model. So causal LM works perfect in this case. And then you have bits and bytes configuration because we have to set configurations for the bits and bytes library that you just imported. And then GMR tokenizer, I don't think we're going to use it, but still you can use it because this is an exclusive library. This is an, sorry, this is an exclusive tokenization that, that, can, that has been exclusively uh, chosen for Google Gemma model. In case you want to use it, you can do so. Here, uh, when you want to access uh, Hugging Face datasets, you have to have this environment token, uh, which you can add from here. You can see the key sign here. You can just go there and write the name of the HF token, and then you can put your API key here. You can get it from Hugging Face. Let me show you how. You can just go here, and then you can go to settings, and then you have access tokens. You can just click we can just click on your token and then uh, you can generate one token here that, that that's just too easy to do and then you here are the prerequisites okay so the model id that we are using is google gemma 7 billion instruct model and then we are performing bits and bytes configuration we are we are performing four bit quantization here okay so this is basically a precision value, precision value that each weight would have so uh, normally we have a 32 bit model and uh, 32 bit precision and now we are kind of downscaling it uh, to 2 power 4 like if i explain it to you in a better way uh, each bit can store either 0 or 1 right so either it's 0 or 1 so it, we can store two values and then we are performing four bit quantization so 2 power 4 so that becomes 16 so we can only have 16 values so mantessa sign value and combining each of them we can have 16 so we can we're kind of downscaling those values for easier matrix multiplication and making our job a lot more easier and keeping this fine tuning thing a lot more quicker in other words so you can see we are using normal float nf4 these are the standard things that you're using okay when you're working on uh, quantization this we are performing four bit quantization that's how uh this is this works out and then uh, we are importing auto tokenizer auto model for causal LM, I just told you, and then bits and bytes configuration. We are using the pre trained model Google Gemma 7 billion insert, and then the same for auto model. This kind of creates a class that's exclusively suited for this kind of model that we use. So, Hugging Face makes our job a lot more easier 
as I told you earlier. Here we are downloading the model. And now you can see, uh, if I give a prompt, like write me a poem about machine learning, since this is an instruct based model, you can see it kind of tries to complete this model since the model is not exclusively designed as a chat model. You can see the response. It says in the realm of data with insights bloom. It looks like it has kind of responded uh, not so okay. Like it, it still looks like a poem, but it's definitely not the response that we are expecting from it, right? So we're gonna deal with this in a very soon. So now we are setting the LoRa configuration. So here we are setting rank as eight. So the matrix that we are using for the rank adaptation is eight. Uh, this is a number that we should be very careful of. Like it should not be too less or too la too large. Too large would just you know make it more computationally demanding, and too small doesn't really make sense because you won't really see significant difference in your model's output after you know making it very less. And then you have some query output key value prop propositions like projections. Uh, if you are not aware of attention mechanism, then it could be slightly confusing for you. Uh, but if you really want to learn about attention mechanism, just, then just please let me know. I'll just explain everything in detail to you. But I won't be able to explain everything in detail in this video because it would just be too lengthy in order if I could explain everything to you. Uh, that's there, the arguments that we have. The task type is again causal alum because I told you earlier we are using causal alum because we're kind of expecting more like a chat model. And here, this is the data set that we are using from data sets info load, uh, load data set. Uh, let me just copy this. Uh, okay, maybe hiding phrase. Yeah, and uh, no, I'll just go here. Uh, I'll just go to data sets. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, this is the data set that we are using. This is a very simple data set that's basically back prompts and improved prompts. Uh, so you have one prompt like write a program that calculates the area of triangle and then you have a fine like yeah, like a fine version of the same prompt. Implement a Python program that takes the length of the sides of a triangle. It kind of says the same, but it's like a more better fine-tuned prompt. This is the model that we're using, and we have like 1.22k rolls, and then we have only one split training and uh, yeah, this is how it is, and uh, we're using this one. Okay, so loading this data set, uh, downloading it, and then you can see how the data set is structured. You can see bad prompts, improved prompts, and then we have 12, 17 rows. It's, it's, I would say it's just okay for fine tuning. And then you can, this is just visualization, like if you want to see how the, this, the model looks like, then these are the kind of bad queries that we have. And then you have uh, this is again you know kind of comparing formatting them for our use case but you don't really have to do that and then you have data train uh just seeing again what's there and then you are setting the trainer model now you have supervised fine-tuning trainer model and the model is the one that we have uh you know stored earlier the google Java 7 billion insert model and then you have training data set data of train of course because i don't have test and then arguments it's trains uh, transformers dot training arguments now we are giving given trans uh, like all the arguments for uh, fine tuning more like hyperparameter tuning for the model. I'm expecting that you guys would know about batch size, accumulation steps, warm up steps, and stuff like that. Because if you guys don't know, then uh, I can explain to you. But uh, the best way to look out and re is just read it yourself. Okay, go to the Hugging Face documentation and you can read everything about it. Warm up steps is kind of gradually increases. Then you have maximum steps of 100. You don't really want to, you know, keep the training loop going and depending on size of data set that you have and this stuff is perfectly fine and then your learning rate how quickly your model learns and then you have fp16 as true because as i told you we are using 4-bit quantization kind of downscaling those those values 32-bit values to 4-bit uh, so uh, you have to set it to true so that the model knows that this is the kind of optimization that we are using and then we have optimizer as atom optimizer but it's an 8-bit atom optimizer you can read about this uh, these are very uh, really effective optimizers that you can use these are very uh, you know easy to use and uh, it kind of makes our job a lot more easier so you can see 8-bit optimizers they are very quick and you can see 75 percent less GPU memory it takes and uh, you have a good amount of models in this uh, you have atom optimizer and then you have this global opti manager we have pretty much things and you have pretty much options but i only but i personally work with uh on optimizer alone only because it just gives you the best results if, if you don't know what to do go for adam that's what i say then you have formatting function that we have set earlier uh to just to make sure that our data is in the right track 
then initiating the training model you can see the training how the loss is going down it's pretty okay I would say now you can see one such example that I've shown here okay uh, if I give a prompt like um, or not not here I think uh, yeah it's here let me just delete the rest of the cells so that these are, these are just a little too confusing for us so yeah um, yeah example here you can see once that prompt that I have given since the model is fully trained now uh, fine-tuned now to our use case you can see I gave this a prompt of uh, I want to learn martial arts and the response that it shows is explain the steps one would take to learn martial arts from beginner to advanced training so this is how the model has improved the prompt okay this obviously this input this prompt is not present in the data training data but the model has fully adapted the style of fine-tuning the prompts no matter what kind of an ambiguous prompt that you give to the model it kind of gives you the response in the best uh, you know tuned and uh, suited for our use case let me give something else uh, I want to learn swimming mm, or uh, let's uh, think about something add two numbers let's say add two numbers let's see how the model will generate this output so uh, this uh, okay okay you can see uh, it does really perform well at least for this one okay okay it's okay Let, let's just change it to something else uh, I want to learn swimming let's see tokenizer dot decode basically kind of converts your uh, token tokens that you have like numbers back into readable text and okay you then have this explain the basic steps of learning to swim and provide tips for beginners okay this is okay I would say I think uh, it depends on the kind of data set that you have and I feel like uh, most of the training data that I used were somehow revolving around training like learning and teaching something like that so that's why it performs pretty well on those tokens so let's try something new uh, mm, how to study well let's just see I don't know how it would react to this oh, 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 oh. okay describe effective strategies for maximizing learning and okay that's that's really nice and academic success in the school and but that's perfect that's like the perfect prompt that I would expect from the model right this is pretty okay I would say and then you have the same thing going just to make this more cleaner and have only thing that I'm interested in these are again the same thing here you can save your model whatever the built-in model that you have you can save it here and then you can uh, create a zip file out of it this is also one such way in order to save it locally if you want to do that you can do that otherwise you can also create one repo on git on hugging face and then you can push it from here that's also something that you can do I already did it so uh, let me check let me show you my hugging face account this is my hugging face account you can just go over here and you can access this from my uh, from my models this is something that you can do and uh, yeah here is my github uh there are a couple of models that are available on my github so in case you're interested you can just go over there and then use any of these models and uh, you know further f improve them or if there's anything else then that you can do you can feel free to connect me so that's pretty much it i hope by the end of this video you'd be you would have at least some basic understanding on fine-tuning an open source large language model and uh, apart from that i will also share this collab notebook to you so that you can just tune some values and then you can use it uh, for yourself make sure you get the hugging face token first and then put it uh, in the keys and then you can just run all these cells together otherwise you can also use other data sets that you have and then just tune these uh, tune the structure of the data uh, for our use case and then you can uh, further use the model. Thank you so much for watching this video.